Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our R&D center in Sindelfingen. In this test lab, we test the electromagnetic compatibility of our products in terms of digitalization and electrification. We mean business when we say electric first. Last year, we presented our roadmap to sustainable CO2 neutral mobility across the entire value chain, Ambition 2039. One of our major goals is to have a CO2 neutral fleet of new cars in less than 20 years. We are sticking to this goal. And we pursue the vision of maximum fascinating mobility with the least possible impact on the planet. Just one example, on the way to CO2 neutral mobility, we have recently entered into a strategic partnership with the battery cell supplier Farasis, a decisive step in our electric offensive. Our goal is to have access to innovative technologies at the earliest possible time. This underlines the importance of the cell as a central component of the battery. We have the clear development goal of significantly increasing the range of future batteries through advances in energy density, while also significantly reducing charging times. The increased efficiency of batteries will further improve the sustainability of electric vehicles in all aspects. In doing so, we rely on a holistic approach along the entire value chain from basic research to serious production of batteries. Our drivetrain strategy is clearly electric first. Our EQ strategy therefore consists of three lanes. The first one is based on EQ Boost 48 volt technology. So we will electrify our portfolio at a large scale. Lane two called EQ Power stands for our plug-in hybrids this year we plan to have more than 20 plug-in hybrid variants on the market. Our upcoming S-Class will also be available as plug-in hybrid with a targeted electric range of 100 km. The third lane is for our all-electric EQ models. The next fully electric model will be the Mercedes-Benz EQA. Our first all-electric compact model with a 400 km range. It will mark the entry in the fascinating world of electric mobility from Mercedes-Benz. The upcoming S-Class plug-in hybrid and the all-new EQA are just two of many proof points of our intelligent drivetrain strategy, which is now well underway. And there's much more to come. I'm looking forward seeing you soon. Hello, I'm Matthias Klöpfer and I'm responsible for the development of hybrid transmission software at Mercedes-Benz. I'm here at the Mercedes-Benz Customer Center in Sindelfing. With our A-Class Hybrid, we will drive now more than 100 kilometers non-stop and we will observe fuel and energy consumption on our trip. The electric range on the display is 51 kilometers, based on my former driving behavior. According to certification, we have around 70 kilometers. We start off using only electricity from the battery. Okay, we have driven 22 kilometers. The combustion engine still hasn't been used. The battery level is still 71% and we have 41 kilometers remaining electric range. The energy consumption so far is 13 kilowatt hours. And so we drive on electrically through Stuttgart. Now we've covered 69 kilometers. The battery is nearly empty and the combustion engine has kicked in. This means if you drive 69 kilometers every day, you can drive just off the battery without using any fuel. Now we 
have 93 kilometers and there we have exactly achieved our average fuel consumption of 1.4 liters and 11 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. This means if I drive like this every day, I can exactly achieve this average value. If I go on as we are doing now, fuel consumption will increase, of course. driven 112 kilometers with a fuel consumption of 2.1 liters. This shows that the advantage in fuel consumption is mainly due to charging. The more often I charge, the lower the fuel consumption. Hello, I'm Matthias Klöpfer and I'm responsible for the development of hybrid transmission software at Mercedes-Benz. We will now check if a plug-in hybrid that has not been charged has a higher fuel consumption on exactly the same route than a conventionally powered vehicle. To make a direct comparison, I have a colleague with me. Hello, I'm Tom Hinsken, also from Mercedes-Benz development. And for our comparison today, we have two GLEs. One is a plug-in hybrid and one is a non-hybrid. The system performance of both vehicles is comparable. But the plug-in hybrid is about 400 kilograms heavier because of the hybrid system, including the big battery. Okay, let's see what the fuel consumption is like. You take the non-hybrid, I take the hybrid. Let's go. We are starting here at Liebenzell Castle and we're going to drive a hilly route in the beautiful Black Forest. The plug-in hybrid has not been charged and the current battery level is 5%. Here our route heads steeply uphill to an altitude of 600 meters. We have now passed the highest point and it seems we have invested a lot of energy to get there. Now we are going downhill and the combustion engine has shut off while coasting or braking. Tom, how about you? So far so good. The combustion engine keeps running and assists me while braking. All right, the plug-in hybrid can now play its trump card, namely recuperation. So the battery recovers energy by braking with the electric motor. So far the battery level has increased from 1 to 5%. You can see how the battery is charging by looking at the charge bar. Now that we are back in the city, we use the recovered energy to drive electrically. So this is a benefit as we do not need fuel at the moment. Now we are back to our starting point. Let's see what the results look like after 17 kilometers. The battery level is again at 5% as it was at the beginning of our journey. So the fuel consumption is directly comparable. Tom, what was the fuel consumption of the non-hybrids? Yeah, it was 9.4 liters. Okay, and the plug-in hybrid is well below that. It was 7.2 liters. That's 25% less. My name is Matthias Klöpfer and I'm responsible for the development of hybrid transmission software at Mercedes-Benz. I'm here in the E-Class wagon and I would like to show you that a Mercedes-Benz plug-in hybrid is a totally practical everyday car. The magic words are forward-looking and intelligent operating strategy. I will show you how it works along a short journey. We'll travel a distance of 72 kilometers. I'm in the default driving program Comfort and the route guidance to Bruchsal is active. I have a remaining electric range of 27 km and a battery charge level of about 60%. While we are in the city, we still drive electrically. Mm -hmm. 
on the highway, the E-Class has switched on the combustion engine. Also, we still have enough energy in the battery. Thanks to the intelligent navigation system, the operating strategy knows that we still have 52 kilometers to go and wants to save the remaining energy so that we can drive purely electrically back in the city. I'm approaching a vehicle in front. Cruise control is switched off, but the car is sinking ahead. As soon as I take my foot off the gas, the vehicle supports me and decelerates automatically. In these suburban areas, the operating strategy uses an optimal mix between electricity and combustion engine. Here at the speed limit, the car also supports me. I take the foot off the gas and the vehicle decelerates automatically and recovers energy. Now that I've reached my destination, the battery is empty and can be recharged. The intelligent drive management system has selected the ideal combination out of combustion engine and electric drive throughout the entire journey. I didn't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm.